Welcome back my rubber hearts. Today we are diving deep into the world of bio-based synthetic rubbers and polymers. This cutting edge field is revolutionizing the rubber industry, making it greener and more sustainable. So let's roll up our sleeves and explore this fascinating topic. Bio-based or biosource synthetic rubbers and polymers are materials produced from renewable raw materials. Unlike traditional synthetic rubbers that rely on fossil fuels, these innovative materials are helping reduce our dependence on non-renewable sources. It's not just good for the environment, it's smart business too. Let's start by looking at some of the key players in the field and the amazing bio-based materials that they are producing. Bridgestone is making waves with their work on bio-based polyisoprene, also known as natural rubber. They're not just using the traditional rubber tree though. Bridgestone is developing Wayule, a shrub native to the southwestern United States and Mexico, as an alternative source of of natural rubber. The guayula plant serves as their biosource from which they extract guayula latex as the raw material. The synthesis process involves harvesting the guayula shrub and extracting the latex through mechanical and chemical processes. This latex is then processed to produce natural rubber. Bridgestone is applying this bio-based polyisoprene in tires and various rubber products. Their work with Guayule could be a game changer, potentially providing a more sustainable and regionally appropriate source of natural rubber for North American production. Lanxess is at the forefront of developing bio-based polybutadiene rubber, or BR, collaborating with various biotech companies to make this a reality. They are using biomass such as sugarcane and corn as their biosource to derive biobutadiene as the raw material. The synthesis process is quite complex. It starts with ethanol fermentation from biomass to produce bioethanol. This bioethanol is then dehydrated to produce ethylene. Finally, the ethylene undergoes oxidative dehydrogenation to form butadiene. Lanxess is applying this bio-based BR in their tires, industrial rubber goods and high-impact polystyrene, also known as HIPS. Versalis, a subsidiary of the Italian energy company Eni, is also in the biobutadiene game. They're using renewable biomass as their biosource to produce biobutadiene as the raw material. Their synthesis process is similar to that of Lanxess, involving the fermentation of biomass to bioethanol, dehydration to ethylene, and oxidative dehydrogenation to butadiene. Versalis is applying this biobutadiene in production of synthetic rubbers like BR and SBR, which is styrene butadiene rubber. Arlanceo, a joint venture between Lanxess and Saudi Aramco, is producing bio-based EPDM. They're using sugarcane as their biosource, specifically bioethylene from Braskem's sugarcane ethanol as their raw material. The synthesis process involves fermenting sugarcane juice to produce bioethanol, which is then dehydrated to form bioethylene. This ethylene is polymerized with propylene and diene monomer to produce EPDM. Arlanceo is applying this bio-based EPDM in automotive weather seals hoses, belts, and roofing membranes. Braschem, a Brazilian petrochemical company, is a key player in the bio-based polymer world, providing bioethylene for various applications. They're using sugarcane as their biosource to produce bioethylene from sugarcane ethanol as the raw material. Their synthesis process involves the fermentation of sugarcane juice to bioethanol, followed by dehydration in bioethylene. This can then be polymerized to polyethylene or used in EPDM production. Braskem is applying these bio-based materials in packaging, automotive parts, and consumer goods. Tire giant Michelin is developing biosourced SVR in collaboration with biotechnology company Amiris. They're using biomass-derived isoprene as their biosource 
with bioisoprene as the raw material. Their synthesis process involves fermenting biomass to produce bioethanol, which is then converted to isoprene through a proprietary process. Michelin is supplying this bio-SBR in tires and footwear production. Another tire industry leader, Goodyear, is also researching bio-based alternatives for tire production. They're exploring various bio-based alternatives as their biosource with biostyrene and bio butadiene as the raw materials. Their synthesis process is similar to other bio-based processes involving fermentation of biomass to bioethanol, conversion to bioethylene and oxidative dehydrogenation to biobutadiene and biostyrene. Goodyear is focusing on applying these materials in tire production. Covestro, formerly part of Bayer, is making strides in bio-based polyurethanes. They're using plant oils such as soybean oil and castor oil as their biosource, with biopolyols as their raw material. Their synthesis process involves transesterification and polymerization of plant oils to produce biopolyols, which are then reacted with de-isocyanates to form polyurethane. Covestro is applying these bio-based polyurethanes in furniture foams, automotive seating, coatings, adhesives, and sealants. Chemical giant BASF is also in the bio-based polyurethane game. Like Ovestro, they're using plant oils as their biosource and biopolyols as the raw material. Their synthesis process is similar to Covestro's involving transesterification and polymerization of plant oils to produce biopolyols followed by reaction with diisocyanates to form polyurethane. BASF is applying these materials in various industrial and consumer applications. French company Arkema is producing bio-based polyamides under their Rilsan brand. They're using castor oil as their biosource with sebacic acid as the raw material. Their synthesis process involves hydrolyzing castor oil to produce ricinoleic acid, which is then oxidized to produce sebacic acid. The sebacic acid is then polymerized with the amines to form polyamides. Arkema is applying these bio-based polyamides in automotive parts, textiles, and consumer goods. German specialty chemicals company Evonik is also developing bio-based polyamides for high-performance applications. Like Arkema, they're using castor oil as their biosource and sebacic acid as the raw material. Their synthesis process is similar to Arkema's involving hydrolysis of castor oil to ricinoleic acid, oxidation to sebacic acid, and polymerization with diamines to form polyamides. Evonik is focusing on applying these materials in high-performance automotive and industrial applications. These bio-based rubbers and polymers are finding applications across various industries. In the automotive sectors, we are seeing bio-based SBR and BR and polyisoprene in tires, bio-based EPDM in weather seals and hoses, and bio-based polyurethane urethane and polyamide in interior components. For industrial goods, bio-based SBR and BR are being used in conveyor belts and industrial hoses, while bio-based EPDM and polyurethane are perfect for gaskets and seals. In the consumer goods sector, bio-based SBR and polyisoprene are showing up in footwear and bio-based polyurethane is being used for furniture foams. The shift towards bio-based synthetic rubbers and polymers is driven by environmental concerns, regulatory pressure, consumer demand, technological advancements, and the need for supply chain security. However, challenges remain, including cost, performance, scalability, land use concerns, and consistency of raw materials. Despite these challenges, the future looks bright for bio-based synthetic rubbers and polymers. As technology advances and production scales up, we can expect to see these materials becoming increasingly competitive with traditional synthetic rubbers and polymers. Companies are also exploring new bio-based raw materials such as algae, and developing biodegradable rubbers and polymers to address the plastic waste issues. So, my rubber hearts, 
The next time you're driving on tires, wearing shoes, or sitting on a comfy foam chair, remember, you might be experiencing the bouncy, flexible wonder of bio-based materials. It's a rubber revolution and it's happening right under our noses, or should I say under our feet. Until next time, stay curious, stay green, and keep your heart as resilient as bio-based rubber. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in our next exploration of all things rubber.